Okay, so I'm going to do digestion now, and uh, here we go. Okay, so the whole point of digestion, the whole reason that we need to do digestion is because food that we eat contains a lot of really big and insoluble molecules. Now, what that means is obviously they're really big, but also they cannot dissolve in water. And because they can't dissolve in water, they can't dissolve in blood either. And so if they can't dissolve in your blood, they can't be transported around your body to all the different places that uh, they're needed. So for example, glucose is soluble, and so you can take it to everywhere that your body needs it. Okay, so that is the reason that digestion happens. And glucose comes from starch. So starch is a really big molecule when you eat it in food. And if you couldn't digest the starch into the really tiny glucose molecules that it's made up of, then uh, those glucose molecules couldn't be carried around in your blood to where, uh, where they're needed because starch is too big to dissolve, to pass through uh, the walls of your digestive system and also to dissolve in the blood. Okay, right. Now the second part is where does digestion exactly happen? Okay, so digestion happens all the way through a thing called the alimentary canal. And what is that? The alimentary canal is basically the tube that goes from your mouth all the way through your body to your anus. Okay, so that consists of your mouth first of all obviously and then going down your throat that's esophagus to your stomach and then your small intestine and your large intestine and the rectum and then out of the anus so that whole thing is actually just one big long big tube called the alimentary canal and that alimentary canal along with other organs such as the liver the pancreas and the gallbladder as well that's about it they make uh, all the chemicals that you need to break down the food and so those other organs along with the alimentary canal together make up your whole digestive system okay now in this topic you actually need to know about each of these organs and what happens in them step by step from the mouth to the anus as well so it's quite a big topic so here goes okay so starting in the mouth uh, the mouth's job is to chew your food up into tiny little pieces using your teeth and then your tongue rolls that food into a ball called the bolus. Okay, and the bolus it then gets coated in saliva and the point of that is that it makes it easy to swallow down your esophagus and the saliva also contains an enzyme which starts to help digest the starch. Okay, so that's what happens in your mouth. Okay, so once the food has gone your mouth and been chewed up into a ball of food called the bolus, it then is going to go down your esophagus. Now what happens in your esophagus is that the food gets squeezed down in waves. So the esophagus is a muscly tube and it's got muscular walls. So those walls squeeze the bolus of food down in waves and that squeezing action of waves of squeezing the food down is called peristalsis. Uh. Okay, so after the food has gone down your esophagus by peristalsis and the muscles squeezing it down, it goes into your stomach, as you know, and the stomach is just a muscly bag, basically, and what it does is it churns your food up, as you know still probably, uh, along with acid and some enzymes, and the enzymes in there are usually the ones needed to digest proteins, and the reason it's acidic is because uh, the proteins work best, no not the protein, sorry, I mean the protein digesting enzymes work best in acidic conditions, okay. So the stomach along with these enzymes and acidic juices churns up your food with its muscly walls and by peristalsis which is again that squeezing actions by your digestive system muscles to make a smooth paste. Okay so once this food's uh, been made into the paste in the stomach it goes into the small intestine small intestine is a very long 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 very very long tube uh, which is very muscly and then it also uh, moves this paste of food now along using that process called peristalsis and the small intestine makes its own enzymes which digest the food as well 
and it also has these finger-like projections called villi. Now these provide a very large surface area for the small intestine to absorb this food with and the villi contain things called capillaries and uh, I did this in the blood topic not the blood topic, the blood vessel, circulatory system topic. The villi are tiny little blood vessels with very thin walls that are one cell thick. And because they're one cell thick, it means that the food, digested food molecules can pass through their wall into the blood inside them. Okay, so the digested food goes from inside the small intestine through the small intestine wall of the villi that finger-like projections in the wall and into the blood in the capillaries in those villies. Okay, um, and that's it for the small intestine. Okay, so the next organ that you need to know that's next to the small intestine is called the pancreas. It's about this big and it sits here in your gut, uh, around about next to your small intestine and its job is just to make enzymes and all you need to do, know is that it makes these enzymes and puts them into the first part of the small intestine. Okay so once the food's been through the small intestine it goes into the large intestine which is the one that goes around the outside of the small intestine in the pictures and the large intestine is a really wide and thin walled tube and the food that goes in there is the food that's not been digested and reabsorbed in the small intestine so what's left over and what happens in the large intestine is that all the water uh, diffuses back into the blood through the thin walls of the large intestine and this leaves behind the solid faeces uh, that's not got any more water in it if that didn't happen your faeces would be like diarrhea and you'd lose too much water and get dehydrated okay so the job of the large intestine is for the water to get reabsorbed into your blood okay so finally after it's been in the large intestine the feces goes to your anus and it passes out of your body as you know okay and after that the last organs that you need to know about are the liver and the gallbladder now so once the food has been absorbed into your body in the small intestine it's then taken to the liver to be processed and some of the molecules are broken down into even smaller molecules and some of them are built up into even bigger molecules uh, such as proteins or whatever the liver wants to make and the liver also makes a substance called bile and this goes into the small intestine uh, along with enzymes from the pancreas and it helps fats to be digested okay so the last organ is the gallbladder and the gallbladder has no job except to store this bile that I just told you about that the liver makes before it's released into the small intestine okay so now that is all uh, you need to know about the digestive system apart from how the uh, individual molecules of food are actually digested and that is the next topic so I'll do that in the next video. Okay.